everyone, I'm Anita with Anita by Design and welcome to my very first series, Sewing with Baby Lock Soprano. In this series, I'm going to cover the entire machine. We'll go through the basic operations. We're going to do some sewing so that you guys can see how some of the features work. We're going to cover utility stitches and some of the decorative stitches. So if you're in the market for a new machine, perhaps an upgrade, or maybe you're new to sewing and not quite sure how to pick out a machine yet, then this is a great series for you because we're going to go through everything together. So make sure you get subscribed down below so that you won't miss any of the episodes. And hopefully by the end of this series, you should be able to make an informed decision as to whether Baby Lock Soprano is a good fit for you. Now in episode number one, we're going to cover the machine and its parts. So go grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, or maybe a glass of wine and come follow me because episode number one starts right now. Okay, the first items we're going to take a look at are your instruction and reference guide and quick reference guide. And these two items, in my opinion, are the most important items that come with your sewing machine because they tell you all you need to know about the machine. So starting with the instruction and reference guide, this is a very detailed guide that tells you how to use the machine and it is broken down into four sections. Under section B is your basic operations. Under S is sewing, D decorative sewing, and A is your appendix. Then over to the right in your table of contents, you get a breakdown of each section. So under your basic operations in chapter one, you learn everything you need to know about getting ready to use your machine. Now, if you want a quick reference, to get started, then you will use your quick reference guide. And here in the table of contents, this guide tells you about the accessories that are included and optional accessories, bobbin winding and setting, upper threading, the name of the machine parts, selecting and sewing patterns, and a summary of the stitch patterns. So if you turn over to the next page, here you get illustrations of all of the accessories included and optional for this machine and they are numbered. If you go over to the next page you get a list of the names of those machine parts and the numbers that coincide with what is illustrated. Okay so let's say you want to quickly learn how to wind your bobbin. You will go to that section bobbin winding and setting and here you get illustration step by step 1 through 28 of how to wind your bobbin okay and it's pictorial only so let's say you get started following these steps and you get to a point and decide hmm I need a little bit more information because I'm not quite understanding this picture all you have to do is go over to your instruction and reference guide to the bobbin winding section so we'll go to the tape table of contents under basic operations and you have winding the bobbin or winding installing the bobbin. So on page B13, let's go there, you will see that here is where you can learn in great detail how to wind and install your bobbin and you, in, you get illustrations along with written instructions of how to do that step by step. So if you are a Baby Lock Soprano owner, I suggest you go ahead and grab your instruction and reference guide because this is the one that I will be using throughout the series and you can follow along. We're looking at the front of the sewing machine. Starting at the very top, this is your top cover and under your top cover you will find all of the different stitches that we can perform with this machine. The utility stitches and the decorative stitches and as we move along in the series we will cover some of these stitches. Just below that in this area to the left is your thread guide plate and this is where you will pass your thread around when you're threading the upper thread. This is your bobbin winding thread guide and you will pass your thread through this part when you're winding your bobbin. Just below that is your spool cap and the spool cap holds your spool of thread onto the spool pin, this area or this part here. 
To the right of that is your bobbin winder. And the bobbin winder consists of two parts that you will use when you're winding your bobbin. Below that is your LCD. And the LCD shows all of the settings that you've selected and any error messages that appear. Below that is your operation panel. And here is where you will choose your stitch settings and any operations that you're using with the machine. At the very bottom, you will see a little circle um, opening here. This is the knee lifter mounting slot and the knee lifter is inserted here and you use it to lower and raise the presser foot. Then up to the left in this area here we have our operation buttons and the sewing speed controller and you will use these buttons as you're sewing. Now we're looking at the left side of the machine and in this area the first thing I'm going to show you is the thread cutter and it's in this area right here. You see there is a split, there's a little opening here, that's your thread cutter so when you're sewing you will be passing your thread through here to cut the thread. Right above that is your needle threader lever. So when you get ready to thread your needle you will just press this down after going through a series of other steps and that will automatically thread your needle for you. Okay now we're looking at the right side view of the machine and here you have your hand wheel and the hand wheel you will turn toward you counterclockwise to raise or lower the needle to sew one stitch. Down below that to your left here you will find your foot controller jack. This is where you will insert your um, foot pedal to sew with. Directly to the right of that you have your air vent and the air vent allows the air to circulate so that your machine doesn't overheat. So you want to make sure you don't press this up against anything because you need the machine to, to uh, vent while you're sewing while it's in operation. Okay, over to the right of that, here you have your, um, your main power switch and this is how you turn your machine off and on. And directly below that is your power supply jack and this is where you will plug in your machine to give it power. Okay, we're now looking at the back of the sewing machine and up top here is your handle. This is for carrying your machine nice and sturdy. And then down below to the right, I'm going to zoom in a little bit so that you can see closer. And here we have your presser foot lever. And this you will use to lift and lower, to raise and lower your presser foot. Okay? And then directly below that is your feed dog position switch. And I have removed the flatbed attachment to expose this. When your flatbed attachment is on you won't be able to see it. So you will switch this to the left or to the right to either um, raise or lower your feed dog. Now let's take a closer look at the operations buttons on the front of the machine starting with the start and stop button. This button is always illuminated and it's color coded based on what's going on with the machine. If it is green then the machine is ready to sew. If it's red that means the machine cannot sew for one reason or another. And then if it's orange that means the binding or the winding the bobbin winding mechanism is in place or the bobbin winder shaft is moved to the right so it won't sew until you correct that. Right above that is the reversed the reverse stitch button and you can use this to reverse stitch to stitch backwards um, or you can use it to reinforce your stitches at the beginning and end of your seams. Above that is your reinforcement stitch button and this one is used for the character and decorative stitches a lot and you just press this button to end with a full stitch instead of stopping at midpoint um, when you're sewing motifs and all the little specialty stitches. Alright, to the right of that is your needle position button and you press this button to raise or lower the needle. And if you press it twice it'll sew one full stitch. 
To the right of that is the thread cutter button and I love, love, love this button because it cuts the thread for you, the upper and the bobbin thread so that you don't have to pull out your scissors to do that, okay? To the right of that is the presser foot lifter button and by pressing this button you raise or lower the presser foot. And then finally to the right is your sewing speed controller and by moving it to the left or the right you control how slow or fast your machine will sew. We're now looking at the LCD and the operation panel. Okay. These buttons you will use to change your stitch width. These buttons you will use to change your stitch length. And these buttons you will use to change the tension of your thread. Moving over to the golden buttons on the right, starting with the settings button. This is the button you will press when you're ready to select a new setting for your project. Below that is the mirror image key and you're going to press this one to create a mirror image for whichever or pattern you have selected. Below that is the single repeat sewing key and you're going to press this one to choose a single or continuous pattern. And then the last one is your back to beginning key and you're going to press this one to return to the beginning of your pattern. In the next column starting at the top is your manual memory key. And you will press this button to save any adjusted stitch width and, stench, uh, and length settings. In the next column, starting at the top, this is your manual memory key. And you will press this button to save any adjusted stitch width and length settings. The next one is your reset key. And you will press this one to reset the selected stitch back to its original settings. Next is the presser foot and needle exchange key and you will press this button before you change your needle or presser foot and what happens is it locks all of the other functions so that you don't change anything else by accident while you're changing your needle or your presser foot. And then the last one is your memory key and you will press this one to save the stitch pattern combinations to the machine's memory. In our far left column, starting at the very top, we have the preset utility stitch and saved pattern key. And you will press this button to select a utility stitch that has been assigned to a numeric key. So after pressing this button, you would choose the number over here that matches the stitch that you are selecting. Below that is the utility stitch key. Again, you will press this button and then choose a number to match the stitch that you're, you're selecting. Below that is the decorative stitch key, same process. Press the button and choose the number. Finally, the character stitch key. Press the button, choose the number that matches the stitch that you're selecting. Okay, the last few stitches or buttons I wanna show you, starting with the back key. And you're going to press this one to cancel the operation and return to the previous screen. To the right is the OK key and you will press this one to apply the selection or perform the operation that you have selected. And finally we have the numeric keys 1 through 0. So all of these keys here you will press these to quickly select a one of the 10 most often used stitches. So you can press five for this zigzag, you can press two for this left um, position needle straight stitch. This is the needle and presser foot section. Starting with the needle bar thread guide, you will pass your thread around this part before threading your needle. This is your needle plate. Below that is your needle plate cover. In the middle of the needle plate cover is your bobbin cover and your bobbin case is housed under the bobbin cover. This is the presser foot that comes attached to the machine and if we remove this one underneath are your feed dogs and the feed dogs are what help to feed the fabric across the machine. Here is your presser foot holder and here is your presser foot holder screw. So when you get ready to change to 
your let's say your walking foot you will loosen this remove the presser foot holder attach your walking foot and then tighten the screw in the back is your buttonhole lever so whenever you want to sew a buttonhole you will lower this lever and when you're done you will push it back up and finally this is your needle screw and this is the one you will use when you're changing your needle so to remove the needle you loosen the screw and after you've replaced it you just tighten the screw back in place okay let's take a look at the measurements on the sewing machine that you will be using we have measurements on the needle plate the needle plate cover and the bobbin cover and the area that you will be using will depend on the needle position of the stitch that you're selecting. So if you are selecting a stitch with a middle or center needle position, you will use the measurements here on the bobbin cover. If you're choosing a stitch that has a left needle position, then you will be using the measurements on either the needle plate or the needle plate cover. So pay close attention to the stitches that you're selecting to know whether or not it has a center needle position or a left needle position. And finally, we are looking at the flatbed attachment and I want to show you the storage compartments that um, are inside. So you will just flip open the front and then you can store some of your accessories that came with your machine. And then I'm going to remove the flatbed attachment to show you that there is more storage on the back end. So you just open that up and then there's more storage. Well that's it for today. I hope you have enjoyed episode number one. If you did, make sure you hit the like button below and don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss any future episodes. Until next time, remember, when you live in your design, it is from there that God shines. That means when you live according to the way that you have been created, it is from that place that God will shine through you. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.